In this video, I'll be trying to provide the IUPAC names of these different organic structures. All right, we'll start with A, B, C, and then D. So you're having these organic structures here, and we are asked to provide the IUPAC name. Now, how do we name these compounds? Let's take them one after the other. Now, let's start with this compound here. Let's start with the A part, this compound here. Now, to name this compound, first things, you observe that this is an enclosure, right? This compound is in cyclic form, and that will give you the name, cyclo, right? So, I'm having cyclo. That's the first thing I observe. Also, observe that you have a double bond at this point here. Now, having a double bond means it's an alkene, okay? That's this. Let's get the longest continuous carbon chain. If I'm to get the longest continuous carbon chain, it would be... Let's say we start from this end. So I'm having one, two, three, four, and five. So I have five carbon atoms here, which would give you what there? Pents. So five is a pent. Okay. We have pents there. Now, in my numbering, the question will be, how do I number this structure? Do I number from, of course, in this structure here, I would have to focus more on the double bond because double bond takes priority. Now, do I start from, let's call this point A, and move clockwise? Would that give me the least number? If I start from A and I move clockwise, this becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. If I start from A and move clockwise, the substituent will be attached to carbon 5. And what I have here is actually a methyl. So I would have 5 methyl. What if I choose to do something else? Let's say instead of A now, I start from this other end here, B, and choose to, of course, if you start from B, you have to complete the double bond, which means you have to go this way, all right? You can't start from B and go this way. That would be incorrect because you have to follow the double bond, all right? So if I start from B there, I would have to follow up the double bond. This becomes 1, this becomes 2, and this becomes 3. So observe that the methyl will be attached to carbon 3, all right, which is actually... Um, smaller as compared to 5 in the previous um, style in the previous style of numbering so we'll go with this numbering here B which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as already done here so with this now we can see that we have methyl at carbon 3 here or on carbon 3 so how do we name this compound here starting with the substituent it becomes 3 the substituent there is methyl so I'm having 3 methyl then, since it's in a ring form, it becomes a cyclo. So, it becomes cyclo. I'm having five carbon atoms as my parent carbon atom. So, it becomes pent. Also, you can see that you have this as, um, you can have the double bond there. So, it becomes pentene. All right? Three cyclo pentene. Or if you want to say one pentene, uh, that's still fine because, okay. So, you can say three cyclo pent, one in. Well, that's still okay. All right. Pent 1 in. That's still okay. But in a cyclopent, uh, you cannot really get a cyclopent 2 in. All right. There's no way we can position this for us to have a cyclopent 2 in. It has to be a cyclopent 1 in. Except in cases where you have two double bonds. They cannot have cyclopent 1, then something else. So the one here is not actually necessary. But then we can still call this a 3 met. 3 methyl cyclopent 1 in. All right, that's the name of this first compound. Let's take the second example. So, the B part here, we are to name this structure. So, how do we name this structure? Looking at this here, the first thing you observe is that you have two double bonds the first double bond here and the second double bond here. All right, so the two double bonds makes it a word there, a diene. Dienes are compound with two double bonds. All right, so let me note that the first thing I have is that they are dienes. All right, so this is a diene. Let's go with the rules. So that's a diene. Next up, we want to do our numbering. Let's see how we can number this structure in such a way that we have the two double bonds or the position of the two double bonds being taken. Let's start with upper numbering. Let's take from the right to the left. I have one, two, three, four five and six that's upper numbering let's go with lower numbering i have from here let's move from left to right i have one two three four five and six if i go with lower numbering what do you observe the double bond is attached to carbon two 
and carbon 5 from up from lower numbering 2 and 5. If I go with upper numbering, all right, the double bond is attached to carbon what there? 1 and then 4. Look at this from upper numbering. So I have 1 and 4. And obviously, I have to go with the least possible or the smallest, which is 1 and 4. So hence, I will go with the upper numbering. Okay. So I'm having 1, 4. All right. So the double bonds are attached to carbon 1 and 4 from the upper numbering. And that's the least. Also from here, I have 6 carbon atoms, as you can see here. Now, if I have 6 carbon atoms here, what does it mean? 6 is hex. So I have hex. Now, aside this one here, observe you have this, this attachment here. Because my parent's carbon atom is this one here. Let me cycle this. This is my parent's carbon atom, this one here. So I have this. And since this one here, this particular one here, is not part of it, we can now say it's a substituent. What is the name of this substituent there? Now, looking at the substituent here, from 3, that's this point here. If I go upward like this, you can see that I have my first junction, which is this. So I have my first carbon here and then a second carbon here. An organic substituent with two carbon is et. That's the ethyl. All right. So this is an ethyl. So note that what I have here is ethyl. So this becomes an ethyl. What position is ethyl attached? Ethyl is attached to carbon three. So name this compound. What do you have there? The compound becomes three ethyl. So E3 ethyl, you have hex. So hex. Now, since this is a diene, you add an A there, right? So you name it diene. We call it, we, we don't call it hex diene. No, we call it a hexa diene. So it becomes hexa. The positions of the double bonds are one and four. So hexa, one, four, diene. Right? So basically, this is how you name this particular compound. Or you can still call this, or it can still be called. 3-ethyl, 3-ethyl, 1-4-hexadiene, all right? All right, so you have this. So this is how we name this compound, okay? Okay, let's take the third one there. Let's look at C. All right, so our third example, which is this. We are asked to provide the name, the IUPAC name for this structure. How do we do that? Now, something unique about this structure is that it has a double bond, which is here as well as a triple bond, which is here, okay? So how do I name this compound? What do I do? The first thing you want to do is let's determine how many carbon atoms we have in this structure. Of course, for our parent carbon atom, we'll have to go through the direction containing both double and triple bond, which would be this one here. And every other thing becomes a substituent. So this is a substituent. This is a substituent. Now, before that, let's determine how many carbon atoms do I have here. From here, don't forget that at, egg, at every extreme, there is a carbon atom. So, here's my first carbon atom, my second carbon atom, my third carbon atom, my fourth carbon atom, the fifth carbon atom, here too, a sixth carbon atom, here at the end too, a seventh carbon atom, and then finally here at the end, there's an eighth carbon atom. All right. So in this case, you have eight carbon atoms present in this compound. So how do we name this compound? All right. So in naming this compound here, we have eight carbon atoms there. The eight carbon atoms, we said eight is what there? Ox. How do you name a compound having double bond and triple bond? The idea is this. In a compound having double bond and triple bond, you should note that priority is given to the double bond. And by that, I mean you want to number this in such a way that you have the lesser number attached to the double bond. And how do you number this to have the lesser number attached to the double bond, which is this? Obviously, I have to start numbering from the right-hand side towards the left so that the smaller number will be, will be attached to the double bond. So I'll be having one, two, three four five six seven and then you have what here as what eight so if i look at this we can see that the double bond is attached to carbon two right so carbon two has the double bond now in a case where i have um double bond and triple bond now in a case where i have double bond and triple bond you don't call it a two pentene although it's a double bond we call it a pentene all right so it's en 
not ene please take note whenever you have double bond and triple bond you have an en not an ene please take note so i have this also again observe that at carbon six all right you now have the triple bond that means this becomes an alkyne all right so it becomes cis ion so it's the normal alkyne you have there so six has the triple bond that becomes six ion so i have this so two has the double bond but you don't call it alkene you call it our it's just en you leave out the last e okay now again we have this one here this is just one stroke this is one stroke attached to carbon four and of course one stroke attached to carbon five so it becomes four and five um, let's add that one there so one stroke is actually a methyl so i'm saying that what you have here is methyl this is methyl here too is also methyl you have this so how do we name this compound here methyl at carbon number four methyl at five so it becomes four five you have to methyl it becomes di which is two methyl all right four five dimethyl i'm done naming the substituents let me now name the main compound now you have oct all right becomes the oct which is eight carbon atom um it becomes oct so oct so you have oct there again the double bond was attached to carbon two it becomes oct two then n all right not in n and of course triple bond attached to carbon six becomes six i all right excuse me six i all right basically this is how you name this compound okay this becomes four five dimethyl or two n six i or you can call this four five alternatively or you can call this four five this is four five you have dimethyl you can take the two first that becomes two octane two octane then cis ion all right so this also works so basically this is how we name compounds of this nature all right all right guys so so far so good i've answered the a part the b part the c part now it's your turn all right so this is d here you have this particular compound here what's the name of the compound on d okay answer this question and leave your answer in the comment section so the, what's the name of the structure for d here leave your answer in the comment section don't forget that i've already discussed the concept of d here now hint d is actually a benzene okay we've discussed benzene as well as other we've discussed benzene and the different homologous series on our website as well as our channel membership all right so go to the website www.junaimani.com forward slash courses and get the organic chemistry full course rest an account to the website before you get it or you can join the channel membership to get full details on how to name things like this as well as their nomenclature their preparation and their reaction okay all right guys don't forget that you can get the complete organic chemistry course on my website simply visit www.jonahimani.com forward slash courses and then you see the organic chemistry full course all right it gives you access to my detailed lecture on all the homologous series from alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, alcohols, ether, esters, including their nomenclature, their preparation, and all the reactions they undergo. All right. Or you can simply join my organic chemistry channel membership to get access to these video lessons. All right. Okay, guys. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. All right. Like this video. Leave a comment. For the comment, I've already given you a task. All right. You have this particular structure here. How do you name the structure? Leave the name in the comment section and I will tell you if you're correct or not. All right. Do all to also subscribe. If it's the first time here or you're yet to subscribe, please do all to subscribe. Hit the bell icon, select all so that you get notified whenever we upload new content. And then finally, do all to share this video to your, to your friends and your colleagues so that they can also learn. Thank you and see you in our next class.